Nicholas Rose is back at it again, ladies and gentlemen. Nicholas Rose is back at it again. The guy that was responsible for, you know, a bunch of people probably getting fired at Grease Muller when it first opened during the pandemic. They had these like outdoor open air events happening at Grease Muller, now called River. I think at the time it was called River Sudust, but previously it was Grease Muller. Now it's called RSO Berlin. So it's gone through a bunch of name changes. But essentially, this raver, this guy, I think originally from America or maybe Canada, I'm not too sure. He moved to Europe, decided to become a bit of a fixture in club spaces and shit, and essentially decided to bill himself as the number one complainer and victim when it comes to nightlife and just make everything, 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 every bad uh, interaction he has on the dance floor into a reason to be a social justice warrior and make it seem like the entire industry is racist, homophobic, and everything else in between. So in his latest attempt, to counsel people in the techno scene, he's now turned his ire, he's now turned his attention across the Ulster Commune and specifically Maron and maybe somebody involved in the Amsterdam dance music scene. I don't really know specifically who it is because he took down the post. So I removed my post because legally I have to pay attention to the fact that, uh, yeah, people will try to come for me in that way. So I'm not gonna say shit right now, but let me tell you, if you saw that video, go ahead and ask who I was mentioning. Ask them personally, reach out to them. Open up that conversation with your friends about this collective. Open up that conversation with your friends about this collective because I'm telling you it's not safe. I'm not mentioning the name right now, but if you saw the video that I just posted, it's in your best interest to ask everyone that you know about this very particular Amsterdam collective that starts with an E and ends with a C. Open up the conversation because too much abuse is happening and I'm so fucking sick of it. Hey yo, first of all, back up from the camera. Anybody that puts the camera that close to their face, I'm uncomfortable. And I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, but this guy is like the advertisement and the textbook example of mental illness. There's something not quite right up there. This guy's not quite all there. Things are not fucking sparking off where they should be. And here he is in clubs, taking uncopious amounts of drugs, drinking all this malarkey and creating all these fantasy situations in his head and all these ops and enemies. When clearly the thing that he needs is maybe a month or two of sobriety, some walks in the park, maybe some jogging and shit, maybe just a different environment and scenario overall just to kind of get him reacquainted. But I personally think this guy's not all there in the head. He might have some undiagnosed mental issues, like for real, for real. For real, for real. He's way too close to the camera. Way, way too close to the camera. But I could be wrong. And it needs to end. It needs to be spoken about because it's not the only collective. And this is the post. So the post that says here, courtesy of Nicholas Rose, 1996. And again, he, allegedly he was born in 1996. Bro, he looks like he's been through some shit. It says, anyway, Maron is a bully. He's a monster and an intimidator for the first time i saw him since he protected what protected his friend who abused me publicly <laughs> bro beat him up man maron is like six four you're like six four two this guy's built like a coiled piece of wire he's ripped to shit he does ballet and shit beat him up man if he sexually assaulted you bro i got no sympathy for you bro like beat him up man come on man wild one for this what is this shit? Did he assault you? If he did, weigh him in. You're a big black dude, man. Tuck him in. If he actually did something to you, tuck him in. Don't be crying on social media. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Get your boy. He victim shamed me personally in my DM. <laughs> Bro, you should... Anyway, whatever. Publicly on IG. You want to know why I left Amsterdam? We don't care, by the way, Nicholas Rose. We don't care why you left anywhere. This guy's getting run out of cities. Like, imagine being a black gay guy and even the gay collectives, even the gay community, even the black community within these scenes don't want you. They're not rallying around you. They're not championing you. They're not protecting you. None of these people are like, you know what? You're too much, man. You're too problematic. Like, they're, 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 if, if, you, if you get the black community and the gay community and the queer community all against you, the kink community, wherever it is, there's something wrong with you. Something is definitely wrong with you. Anyway, let's continue. Get your boy. 
He victim shamed me personally on my DM and publicly on my IG. You want to know why I left Amsterdam? Because the other owner of EC, Ursula Commune, Isabel, called the police on me for exposing my abuse. <laughs> Yo, this guy is such a psycho that the owners of these club nights and these commotions are calling the feds on him. He's scaring them so much. They're like, yo, please get this guy away from this space. This guy is too, like, please, please take him away. Please, boys in blue, please take him away. Um, literally trying to get me deported. My truth is not being done. Sh no, my truth is not being done, sh is not done shared. Jesse's other friend, I guess Jesse's Maron, um, then bullied me yesterday asking why I didn't leave the v the venue since Jesus arrived. <laughs> Jesse, that's a good question to ask, though. So, if you hear the um, and build works outside, that's actually a good question to ask. If somebody did sexually abuse you, if you did get assaulted, if you did get embarrassed, if you did get victim shamed, whatever all these buzzwords are, and that person who was responsible for those things that happened to you that are very hurtful comes into the same space you're in. Either you choose violence or you leave. But crying about them being the same space as you is idiotic. What do you want us to do? Either you fucking smash a glass over their head or you leave the space. What else do you want us to do? You're a man. That's a man. Like, what else do you want me to do? If it's a woman, it's a whole different conversation. But if it's man or man, you have to either decide to put your fucking fist up, get violent, you know, maybe a little bit of a drinking in the side of their neck, catch a fucking charge, but at least your abuser is now DEAD. Instead of crying and complaining on the internet. That's what I would do. Not advocating for violence, but again, if I did get actually abused and I see my abuse in the same space that I'm in, God forbid, God forgive me if I bust my nine. God forgive me if I bust my nine. I don't want to get locked up like Shine. That's actually what's going to happen. But now I'm going to be fucking writing paragraphs on black you know, white text on black background on Instagram, asking for sympathy. Nah, I'll just be asking you to go to donate to my GoFundMe to get me out because I'm locked up and shit. Come on, bro. What's this guy talking about? I didn't leave the venue since Jesse arrived. You know who you are and the truth will come out. Bloody hell, Nicholas Rose. Bloody hell. Always crying and complaining about something. Now my DMs are flooding with other horror stories from the collective. Oh, and I'm the dramatic one. Yes, you are, bro. Your name should be Nicholas D. Rose. That's what your name should be. D for fucking drama and dick. Your truth will always come out. Just open the conversation. God almighty, the conversation. I'm the victim. The number just one victim. Just piggybacking on my last message. Yeah. 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 Let's go. When people start acting crazy and they start acting guilty and... <laughs> Anytime someone like that talks about crazy, bro, have you seen yourself? Have you seen your stories? Have you seen how you talk? Have you seen how you communicate? Have you seen the things that you cry about on social media? You're talking about crazy. God damn, pot kettle black. And they start saying, be quiet, be quiet. It's because there's truth. With it only- No, sometimes people can tell you be quiet because you're annoying. <laughs> because you just shut the fuck up. Not because you're a truth speaker. <laughs> because you're exposing things. Maybe you're just annoying. Shut the fuck up. 40 minutes, I already lost two friendships. Isn't that crazy? Within 40 minutes. In one, I, I just got off a train. <laughs> he's being, him being surprised that he, he's got no friends is fucking hilarious. Nicholas Rose being surprised. That he's got no friends is sending me. I swear to God, this guy's lack of self-awareness is on negative zero. Before I got on the train, I had two friends, and after I literally have two block people now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Just by mentioning a single person's name. Because they don't want to be any, having anything to do with that. And that's fine. And people say, Nicholas, your reputation. The shit's already been fucked up. Y'all already tried to ruin my reputation. I ain't got shit to lose. Reputation, that shit is only about how people view you. He's walking around the streets of Berlin, topless with a backpack on. Should have known what time it is, isn't it? No shape up. No shape up. Heavy bags under the eyes. Probably been up for 17 days. Screaming into his fucking <laughs> headphone mic. 
<laughs> he's a psycho. I swear to God, the back of it, the you know, his back, that's back of the fucking backpack must be covered in fucking sweat. Just ranting and raving in the middle of the afternoon, talking about Maron and Ursa Comune. Who? <laughs> like in the widest, in the widest scheme of the things, <laughs> Nicholas Rose is a fucking psycho. <laughs> Reputation is about how people see you. That's not actually the truth. It's just how people view you. Okay. Y'all. If anyone's trying to make you feel bad about something because of your reputation, fuck them and fuck a reputation. The only thing you have in the dance music scene, especially in a niche, in a subculture like this, is reputation. Unfortunately. Especially if you're not a legit victim, especially if you're just like, essentially trying to bully people into submission through misinterpret, purposely misinterpreting or miscategorizing situations in the hopes of you maybe shaming people into submission to do the things that you want, you're not going to gain any friends. It's already hard enough as it is to be a legitimate victim, a legitimate victim of sexual abuse, rape, and everything else in dance music scene and getting them to pay attention to you. It's probably worse if you're somebody that clearly is somewhat of an ambulance chaser, a fucking, you know virtue signal whatever you are whatever this thing is that he is it's probably even worse especially when you're completely burning all your bridges within some of the most important cities in europe concerning dance music what do you expect people to kind of band around you when you're doing nothing to kind of help your situation when you're going out of your way to needlessly and without any real evidence just throw accusations at our people Allegedly, he put out a post about Maron and Ursta community that was a bit dicey and accused him of some things that I'm assuming he got told, hey, take that down or we're going to sue. And now he's still ranting and raving about it and he's surprised that people aren't coming to his defense. It's like, bruh, bruh. Don't you care more about the truth than a reputation? Oh, but in the techno scene, y'all are talking about community and being there for each other. But you don't want to talk about how some of y'all friends are actually abusing their privilege and their power and their platform. What privilege? What power, brother? They're just DJs. What privilege and power do some of these people have? Some of these people are legitimate drug addicts, legitimate nitties, legitimately. Some of these people are also bullied in high school. You can tell a lot of these DJs were bullied in high school, weren't really that popular, were never really cool. And now you get behind some decks and you fucking do the little fucking techno shop and everyone's fucking jacking you off. Why are you letting these people get to you? Why are you letting them fucking disturb your peace? Why are you letting them bully you? SA you? Great, like, really? And you're like a six foot plus athletic looking black dude. Bruv, tuck them in. Beat them up. Kick their asses. There's nothing I love to see more than outwardly gay guys beating people up at clubs and shit. And letting people know, hey, I might be a FA whatever, but I'm going to tuck you in. It's actually quite pleasurable and quite satisfying to see that on a dance floor because sometimes people get it confused because somebody's sexual orientation, is, they, they almost think that you can't fight. It's like, bro, I've grown up in a struggle. I've grown up in the hood trying to, you know, does it, like, like, what does it make any sense? So actually tuck these people in or just change scenes. Go somewhere else. Do something else. If it's toxic and really that fucking hurtful, that painful, go somewhere else. Go somewhere you're going to be appreciated. Leave the scene behind. It's not that deep. You're not really missing out on much. It's just nightclubs and people playing them behind DJs, behind fucking turntables. It's not that deep, really, in my opinion, anyway. A lot of people are asking about what really just happened, why I'm posting this, and I'll make it very, very short. I can sum it up in just a few sentences. He says in the caption, there's the truth. Now I'm done talking about this until further notice, which is obviously not true because as you can see, there's many more stories after this, right? Every time anyone, any, anytime somebody says not being rude, they're going to be rude. Anytime somebody saying I'm done talking, they ha they're definitely not done yet. They just started. It's always the opposite. But in this particular thing, he says, yes, there were witnesses this time. I bet you no witnesses come forward. No one's going to want to put their name next to this guy and endorse him support him back him publicly never he's so toxic he's so radioactive he's so problematic he's so fucking annoying 
and probably a pathological liar, nobody's going to be willing to say, yeah, I saw what happened to this guy. No one. Why would they? Fuck that shit. But let's see what he says. I was sexually assaulted at Brett last September by the owner of a party. And she was connected to Roddy. You let a woman sexually assault you in a nightclub in Amsterdam. Huh? It, is this lady built like the woman from fucking Game of Thrones? If not, then what are you talking about? Be on as well. Jesse Maron not only privately victim shamed me, he publicly victim shamed me. I would too. You let a woman sexually assault you in a nightclub. You deserve to be victim shamed. I'm sorry. If this is a dude, fair enough. If he was bigger than you, fair enough. But you let a woman sexually assault you in a club and now you're crying about it on social media. You should have punched her in the face. That's actually the only time. And if you think about it, maybe only gay men have the ability to actually punch women in the face anyway and not get fucking chastised in public. But if there's ever a time a man can punch a woman square in her face is when she sexually assaults you in a nightclub. Because if the, if the tables are turned, if, they, if, they, if you sexually assault a woman and they punch you in the face, that'd be completely justified. Oh my God, this building works. You should, you should have punched this woman in the face. What is he complaining about? I'm not surprised Maron publicly shamed you. I would have victim shamed you too. Bullied and intimidated me and I ran into him for the first time since my attack in person. And he then again for the third time bullied, intimidated me, cursed at me and started the sentence off with, ha ha ha, so you think you can fucking block me? Really? Ha 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 ha. That's Jesse. That's Maron. Also, calling DJs by their first name and trying to espouse familiarity is so cringe. It's almost akin to like, you know when rapper baby mothers or like side pieces are like calling their fucking rapper, you know, Quavius, you know, oh, Quavius or whatever, whatever fucking Quavo's name is and shit. It's like, bruh, we get it. We get it. You suck the guy's dick. We get it. This is so lame. Calling the DJ by their real name. Oh, my friend, J he's not your friend if he laughed at you. Oh my God, the banging. If he laughed at you for fucking getting abused by somebody. Come on, man. Oh, and afterwards, his other friend, Martin, actually asked me, oh, so you're still here? I thought you would have left by now since Jesse arrived. So there's a post here that shows a DM that he must have received from somebody on Instagram. And the DM says as follows. Oh my God, so real. This is why I stopped partying in Amsterdam. So many of my alleged quote unquote friends kept supporting people that literally bully people into using G... I need to close this window. This, is, this noise is too much. Honestly, that fucking building work is doing my head in. The building work is absolutely doing my head in. Anyways, this person on social media said as follows to Nicholas Rose in support, in support of him trying to cancel Erste Commune. Oh my God, so real. This is why I stopped partying in Amsterdam. So many of my alleged quote unquote friends kept supporting people that literally bully people into using G and also spike people around them if they decline. And also all the hundreds of times I got groped on the dance floor. Bro, anybody that bullies you into using drugs isn't a bully, just a friend. You letting yourself get bullied into using a drug isn't something to be proud, isn't something to be like using as a victim card thing. You're just a weak person. How are you gonna let somebody bully you into using drugs? How old are you? Are you over the age of 17? If you're under the age of 17, you shouldn't be in a nightclub in the first place. If you're over the age of 17, you're a fucking loser if you let somebody bully you into use, using drugs. Especially a drug such as, you know, with lethal consequences as fucking GHB. Like, what are you? Like, come on, man. Like, what is this complaint about? And also, a hundred times I got groped on the dance floor. If you got groped on the dance floor at this club, at this party, why do you keep going back? If they clearly don't want to look after your safety, if they don't have people there monitoring things and keeping an eye on things, you complain and they don't fucking respond well to it, just stop going. How many times do you have to go to a party and get groped and get assaulted and get violated before you stop going? 
So you want to be in a cool place with all the cool people. They do some fucked up shit. You complain about it, but then you keep going and you want us to care. Okay, cool. It continues. Um, and also the hundreds of times I got grubs on the dance floor, told friends and even the people running the events about them and everyone was just told me that it was my own fault due to me looking slutty and acting slutty online. That's, n n you know, we don't know if that's even true. It's just people just talking for talking sake. But if your friends are saying that to you, then obviously they're not your friends, clearly. I mean, you've, you, you've to take someone's complaint seriously after not so many times and them saying you were asking for it. I was literally asking you several times to stop and you continued. What do you mean? Some people just stop going outside. I think some people should stop going outside. There is maybe a prevalence of people that have issues that they have to deal with behind closed doors. And the last thing they should be doing is being in nightclubs, personally for me. Because I don't understand going to a place, getting abused, and all these type of things and then keep going back there's something wrong there's something wrong with people that keep going back to these type of places definitely something wrong let's continue another one never liked the guy it always makes sense now when they was in london for ec i already didn't like the vibes from him absolutely did unless you again <laughs> i've had some not so pleasant interactions with djs but they've been direct communication with them and for the most part, I just stopped listening to their sets. I stopped taking an interest in what they're doing and just stopped talking about them or mentioning them in any way, shape or form. It's not that deep, really and truly. No love lost. There's many other DJs that I can follow and be fans of. There's one thing I'm not going to do is have somebody try and like, you know, big, big bro me or big time me, especially because you play music. Like, I'm not that impressed. I don't give a fuck. It's not that impressive to be a DJ personally. I do it for fun and shit, but essentially it's one of the easiest things to do. Easiest, it's one of the easiest art forms to kind of get involved in, especially if you don't even know how to fucking make your own music. It's not even that big of a deal. But regardless, I never understood this idea that people have where DJs have to kind of be their friend or they have to like, the, like I don't know, maybe just go and see people for what they are good at they play good music they have a style that you like and shit support them if you want it, it is what it is but this whole thing about oh i didn't like their vibe from afar is a bit weird like what did what did they actually say to you what did you hear from them directly to make you believe that because some people haven't had interactions with them or maybe what because they didn't give you a g-list spot or something because i don't know i'm not i'm not really sure about some of these people let's continue Just one more thing. If you're actually, if there's one thing this guy likes to do is talking to a camera and complaining. It. You rarely hear him, you know, talk about himself and his art and his creativity and the things that he wants to put out in the world with such level of ferocity and confidence. It's always complaining about shit in the scene. If the scene is that toxic, really, and it's what he's saying is true and he's not a liar, leave. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere you're appreciated. Go somewhere you're respected. Don't keep crying and complaining about things that are clearly never going to change. Especially with you. you. He's not the best person to get behind, personally. Actually wondering about the validity of my experiences, i.e. Amsterdam people who are watching my story. Right now, there's actually like hundreds of people watching. Look at those eyes, bro. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes, bro. Look at those eyes. This nigga is fried. God damn it, man. Have a glass of water or something. Go and walk in a park or something, man. Get away from the scene. It's not that deep. Put down the baggy. Chill. My story from Amsterdam who had unfollowed me or left me for dead since I left the country. Or should I say since I was... Left me for dead. <laughs> because he didn't get into a club. You remember when he nearly got the entirety of the fucking River Sudus, Grish Muller, RSO collective employee base fired? Because someone dared to tell him to put on a mask during a COVID party. COVID is rampant. People are dying left and right. This is before we uncover the truth behind COVID and the, you know, the, 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 the real facts behind the mask and shit. Before, when we were all fucking scared and shit. But we were still trying to live our regular schmegular lives. They had this really interesting scene at the time in Berlin where there was loads of open air parties happening. People clearly trying to get back to some semblance of normality, try to get back to doing the things that they enjoyed, trying to get out of the house and shit. Club spaces opening up and decided to push the boundaries, push the limits of how they can open. A club decides to do that, give you the space to party, and have a good time. 
All you have to do is follow the rules and just keep your face mask on at, when you're on the dance floor. Maybe you can sneak a little, you know, breather here and there to have a bump, have a drink, whatever. But for the most part, just keep your face mask on. This motherfucker took it off for a, a, a prolonged period of time. Security guard told him to put it back on. And he turned it into an entire episode of Grease Muller and the Berlin techno scene being racist and homophobic and complain that they left him on the streets without his coat and it's like bro like what are you talking about man like literally what are you talking about come on man pushed out the country due to bullying intimidation not wanting to continue my time there um just go ahead and ask the people yourself go ahead text jesse text the ec people text your friends who you're partying with every weekend and ask them is this true <laughs> see what they have to say Look this guy's an agent of chaos so he's an agent of chaos part of me kind of likes him because i like chaos because i like fuck shit because i like psychos i kind of like him because he's legitimately ruffling so many feathers within the berlin techno scene amsterdam techno scene more than likely he'll find his way to london and you'll fucking flip this whole place upside down right <laughs> you go to fold you'd be like fold too white Fold so white, like why the rest? Of, why were the rest of the DJs white? What's all this shit about queer acceptance and shit when none of the people involved in the background of like keeping this club alive are queer or gay? Wog <laughs> He's gonna have a field day in London, man. He's gonna have a fucking field day. Look at their body language. Look into their eyes. You can see for their self. You can see. You can see. And for the ones that ignored me and left me for dead, for the ones that were up inside of my home every weekend partying with me, but that whole time you knew there was someone who had abused me, I see you, baby. And I know you're watching my story. Nick is a complete jump scare. Yo! He's so clapped. Oh my god! Ew, brother. Ew. What the fuck? Yo, Nicholas Rose, never do that again, brother. Please, brother, never do that again. Never ever do that again. I swear to God, never ever do that again. See you, baby. And I know you're watching my story. And I know you're watching my story. And I know you're watching my story. Yeah. Anyway, uh, another another DM. Um, no one brings up their youngest protege DJ, LOL, that went out during their first EC event. Who get, who, who went what? That went out during their first EC, their first big EC event. Who they cared so little about that they directly put him in the street like a dog and didn't blink an eye talking of what what is this because english is not their first language what does this even mean no one brings up their youngest protege dj so somebody within us the community is known as a protege protege sorry and he's really young that went out during their first event and got honestly man the scene is full of some legitimate mentally ill people i swear to god it's almost worrying how quick they are to jump to social media when they should be in homes babe nicholas i've heard babe nicholas i've heard is hella problematic and is a source of a lot of dramas i've been told that he has a lot of trauma and victim mentality and actually the people that i stayed with when i was within da, 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 had stories about him too he's synonymous with the scene of drama and he's from multiple groups of different people that's probably true so what he's sharing he's sharing evidence of people talking bad about him and it's actually quite accurate hmm i hate it that these things happen to a person like you I'd also have some weird symptoms with Maron, situations with Maron. He acts just like he doesn't want to talk to people who enjoyed. Oh my God, the fucking entitlement. The fucking entitlement. What is wrong with these people? Why are people so obsessed with DJs trying to be there? Why are they so obsessed with people who are trying to be DJ friends with people? Or friends with DJs, sorry. What is this obsession with people in the scene trying to be friends with DJs? Is it just because they want to get on guest list? Is it like celebrity culture? What is this stuff? I also 
have some weird situation with Maron. He just acts like he doesn't want to talk with people who enjoyed his set. So what? Do you like his set or not? If you did it, you dance, keep it moving. He doesn't have to be your friend. He doesn't have to suck you off. You know how annoying it must be to be a professional DJ and be DJing sober and have drunk and high people coming up to you trying to give you their life story. No wonder they avoid people and just want to run away or just want to duck back, back into the green room. I get it. Enjoy their set, dance along, maybe give them some air kisses from the crowd and shit. Keep it moving. You don't have to try and be their friend. Why? Because they play music. Because they might have free drugs. Because they might put you on a guest list. Get your own friends, man. God damn it. I went to the last Usher community and he was walking in the club like he was the king. He is the king. That's why you go to Usher Community. You go there, you give him all these views on YouTube, you buy all these fucking releases and shit because he's the fucking king. He plays at Bergheim. He's very well known. He's well in demand. He's got loads of followers on social media. He clearly is one. Why are you trying to diminish my, my man's achievements? He can't walk around. Like, honestly, if I did what he did, if I was at the level that he was, of course I'm going to be walking around and let my fucking nuts hang. Why can't I let my nuts hang if I am fucking the guy? You're there because he's a guy and now you can play needs acting like the guy. What do you want me to do? Be all meek. Be all fucking shy. Be all timid. Like, nah, man, I'm just, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to do my thing. You know how it is. Nah, let your nuts hang. Let your nuts hang, brother. Let your nuts hang. God damn, these people are so annoying. So it doesn't surprise me. Sorry, um, he was... Sorry, let's go back again. I went to the last Easter Commune and he was walking in the club like he was the king or something and just not positive energy in the party. Like he's better or something. He is better than you, clearly. Because you want to be his friend too. You clearly look at him... You, you put him on a pedestal and then you're surprised that he's acting the way he's acting. Duh! You created a monster and now you're surprised at his fucking reactions. Stop fucking putting him on a pedestal then. Treat him like a regular guy and maybe he might chill out and not be such an egomaniac. Or maybe not. Maybe he's justified to being one. He's one of the rare people that's made it playing other people's music in clubs. It's not. It's hard to do. It's the most easy profession to get into, but it's the hardest to make it because everyone does it well. I'm sure we all have friends. Probably five friends that are just as good as any professional DJ out there. There's so many, especially if you live in a metropolitan city. You fucking throw a stone outside your window and you're going to fucking hit 10 or 12 DJs outside. It is what it is. So maybe you should be a little bit confident. You should have a bit of an ego because you fucking made it. It's hard to do it. He did it. Being a black guy too. Fucking hell. Let him chill, man. Fuck this. Anyway. So it doesn't surprise me that he does these things. Hold on, you're trying to say that he might be abusive because he's confident. He might be an ab he might be a, a sexual abuser. He might be a victim blamer just because he's confident. Just because he has belief in himself. <sighs> the scene really does hate niggas, isn't it? So it doesn't surprise me that he does these things. Whenever you're back in Amsterdam and want to party, don't hesitate to text me. This is the worst. You don't need more friends to text like. I'll show these fuckers what having respect... What? I'll show these fuckers what having respect is. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to start smiling, dancing in front of them. What are you going to do? You're going to start high-fiving Nicholas Rose the entire time you're fucking partying to show them like you guys are positive and good energy. Fucking tapped. It continues. Um, keep positive and do what you are. Do what... And do what you are. You'll get your way... Maybe you'll take some time, but it pays off. No, it doesn't pay off. This guy's a psycho. This guy's regarded as a mental case. This guy needs some help. This isn't paying off. This is a bad strategy, a very bad strategy. No one believes him, even if his accusations are true. Because he's so crazy, because he's so unhinged, because he's so unrelenting with his desire to be a victim, people are refusing to believe him. And he might be actually telling the truth. But because he's such an unlikable, untrustworthy person, you just don't want to back him. You don't want to endorse him. You don't want to pay attention to him. If anything, you just think he's talking out of his ass, which might he might not be. He continues. Anyway, the last screenshot says here, do you know the truth about the ones who run as their community? Y'all need to look closer or your in what's that? Ends blog, a big or your ends blong 
a bigger problem. What does ends belong mean? Is that like a Dutch word? And yes, I am resharing my my abuse from Naomi. You cannot use your platform, fame and connections to isolate, bully, intimidate anymore. Y'all are protecting rapists and abusers. Disgusting. Bro, I'm sorry, but no one called Naomi sexually abusing me. I will physically assault. I will beat the shit out of a Naomi before they, physic they fucking sexually assault me. As a man, I'm sorry. If it's a woman, it's a different case, different level of sensitivity, different level of care, different terms of attention, different, different levels, different. But if you're a man, there is no scenario in the world where you'd let a Naomi sexually abuse you, especially in the dark, unrecorded platform of a nightclub. Tuck that person in. Choke her and fucking unconscious if need be. But there's no way in hell I'm leaving that space without this lady leaving with some fucking bruises. Come on, bro. What the fuck are you... If there's, what, if there's any excuse... If there's any rationale, any reason why you should be exerting some level of violence to somebody, it's when they cross that line and try and sexually abuse you. But in this case, he'd rather run onto social media and cry about it. What a loser. And then the last one, yeah, that's basically it. You, got, you get the gist of it. You fucking get the gist of it. I personally, I don't know, man. I don't really know what this guy's end game is. I really don't know. I wish I knew what this guy's end game is. Um, maybe he is telling the truth with some of these accounts, but I don't know. He's just such an untrustworthy character. He's so annoying. Um, you know, he seems to have problems everywhere he goes. And again, not every time, not every place you go to and you have issues should be relegated to the point of view of like, oh my God, if everywhere you go, there seems to be a problem, it's definitely you. Maybe that's not always the case. But in this particular case, it's like, brother, how many situations do you need to get yourself in in these type of, how many similar situations do you need to get yourself in before you start making some changes in the way that you approach nightlife, in the way that maybe you, you approach the club scene? Maybe there's something that you need to do to kind of change how people look at you, how you're perceived and shit, because clearly, clearly, clearly something is going all right. I don't know how, I don't know why, but clearly something is going all right. He needs to change it, but he's not willing to. I'm not too sure why that's the case. I'm not too sure why he seems to be enjoying roughly. Maybe it is a mental illness. Maybe he legitimately enjoys being a victim. Everything about it doesn't make sense. But this guy is clearly, again, he might not be that tall. He might be kind of short, but he's a muscular, like, ballet dancer guy who looks like he could look after himself. And he's allowing himself to get essayed by, like, women who run, like, club nights in Amsterdam who are usually out of their minds on care or G or H or whatever else. It's like, bruh, like tuck these people in why are you letting them fucking abuse you what is going on here are you enjoying it slightly like what is happening here why don't you just leave the scene and do something else why don't you go to do ballet i'd imagine as well because this guy's such a complainer it wouldn't surprise me if he's got a rap sheet as long as he has in the dance music scene the ballet scene too probably about representation and diversity and all that nonsense this guy is a fucking menace bro but m case in point I don't even think he's probably telling the truth. He's probably telling a half truth. Maybe something did happen at Ursula Community. But maybe he's leaving out the part that he played in it too. Maybe. Who fucking knows? Either way, bloody hell. Bloody hell. Bloody, 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 bloody hell.